In our previous video, we saw that we can create an autocomplete easily with the Prime Faces tools, and that we can back that with a managed beam. In this video, we're going to see how we can expand our J2EE application into multiple layers. Right now, all we have is a UI and a DTO layer, and we want to make it look more like the class diagram that we created, where we have specific layers for user interface, data transfer object, business logic, and data access object. So in this video, we're going to start to implement that model. First, to checkpoint on where we are. On our Scrummy board, we have a few stories coming up. We have environment setup, prepare IDE. I think it's safe to say we've completed that. Install Tomcat, we've completed that as well. Implement JSF. I'm going to say for the moment that we're done. We'll have more to do when we get to the advanced areas, but we've at least set up JSF. Implement advanced controls. We've added the control, uh, but we have not added yet the logic to power that control, which is what we're going to do in this video. Uh, template. We did make a template. Uh, we did use our CSS to make a template to make the site look good. So currently the item that we have uh, in progress is implement advanced controls. Okay, so we have our DTO layer and our UI layer. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a new layer for the UI. I'm sorry, for the uh, business logic. And we're going to call this com.plantplaces.service. Service, integration, business logic, a lot of times those words are used interchangeably. We'll also make one for our DAO and right click on Java. Re I'm sorry, I should have done that on source. Right click on source, new, and then package. And we're going to say com.plantplaces.dao and finish. Okay, so now in the service layer, I'm going to start with an interface. I'm going to say uh, new, and then I'm going to say interface, and we're going to call this one I plant service and everything else is just fine and I'll choose finish. Now an interface is typically a well-documented structure and it's simply a list of methods. If we give the interface appropriate Java documentation, Javadoc, then we don't have to Javadoc the classes that implement the interface as heavily. We typically will only give them excessive Javadoc if they do something that, that is uh, different from what the interface is doing. Uh, otherwise, we'll say, we'll put a reference back to the interface and say, hey, see the Java doc here. Uh, because the, 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 the name of the method, the purpose of the method is more important than how the method is accomplishing that. So up at the top, uh, slash and two asterisks. And we might just say this uh, interface, or this Just a moment. We'll say I plant service uh, includes all business related functions for, for a plant and related entities. Possibly more than more than that to come eventually. And let me allow me to control them so we can see it in high def. Authors, some people will use this, others will not. Uh, so I will go ahead and put my name here. Okay, next we're going to want to uh, add some methods and we need to think about what are these methods going to look like. Let's remember our conversation earlier where we said what goes in a business logic layer. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Uh, aggregate data from several DAOs, multi-component validation, logic that multiple UI elements will access, and a local cache of data for performance. So, uh, okay, one good thing that we might want to do is we might want to do this filtering that occurs when we have our autocomplete. Right now it's just dummy data uh, that we have in our uh, managed beam called search plants. It's a uh, create filter method, a complete plants method. And we, we've so far just put some dummy data in here. We wouldn't want to do this filtering in the UI because it's very possible that we're going to reuse this filter across other things like 
JSON data feed or perhaps multiple pages that have different managed beans. So I'm going to make a filter very similar to the one that we saw on our managed bean earlier, that is filtering down a list of plants based on some query text. So we're going to say public. There's methods in an interface typically are public. And then we're going to say list. List is an interface itself that represents a collection. So we're not concerned with the underlying class that's implementing this list. Uh, we're simply going to say list and we're going to use a generic identifier to determine what this list is going to contain. This is where a DTO works well because a DTO is a collection of other independent attributes, strings, doubles, floats, and even other objects. The nice thing is, as the internals of that DTO change, we don't need to change any internals of this interface, because I'm simply saying plant, where plant is our DTO. And then I'm going to say maybe filter plants, and then string filter. Make it generic. I don't want it to be exactly like what we have in our managed bean. I want to make this something that's a little bit generic. Now remember, uh, an interface is just a list of methods. So there's not going to be any text here. We're just going to have, I mean, there's not going to be any curlies here. We're just going to terminate with a semicolon. You see I have red lines under list and plant. Those are easily fixed. But we know that when we have a red line, we want to stop everything and fix it before moving on. We don't want to continue to write junk on top of junk. In Eclipse, this is uh, the, uh, the red line is caused by uh, missing imports. So in Eclipse, a control shift O will organize inputs, imports. We'll say Java util list, and there we go. The plant it was able to find automatically. Control S to save, and that should take away from red lines. Red lines are gone, and let's uh, add some Java doc. So, boom, boom. And enter. And typically, the slash and the two asterisks in Eclipse will create a template. It takes a look at the parameter and the return type and starts the Java doc for you. So I will say return a collection of plant objects that contain the given filter text. OK, a little misspelling there. We'll fix that pretty easily. Uh, nonetheless, we get the idea. As a matter of fact, allow me to control M uh, so we can see this in high def. OK, uh, filter a substring that should be contained in returned plants. And then return, and then uh, a collection of matching plants. OK, and save. So now I have the iPlant service, and all I need to do is make a class that implements this. So control M one more time. Okay, and now I'm going to right click on com plant place of service, and I'm going to uh, tell it to create a new class that implements this interface. Okay, uh, name, we're going to call it plant service. We could call it plant service stub if we want, but let's go ahead and call it plant service. Super class is fine as Java lying object. Interface, I plant service, and you see as I start typing, it's going to start narrowing down the list. So OK and finish. You see it automatically creates a little stub for me. Uh, it says filter plants and then return null. We don't want to leave that as return null. That's going to cause a null pointer exception sometime later. Uh, but we know that our plant data is going to come from uh, a DAO. So let's go ahead and, and think about what the DAO is going to look like. We, now, we know we're going to have several entities. We saw uh, when we created our entity relationship diagram that we'll have a plant, a specimen, a photo, a contributor. But one rule of Scrum is worry about future complexity later. Don't burn all your time uh, making a huge infrastructure for complexity that hasn't happened yet. Just get uh, your current job done in what's called a minimum viable product. So I'm going to go to the DAO package. I'm going to choose New. And I'm going to choose Interface. And this one I'm going to call I plant DAO. Notice DAO, not service or DTO, but this one is I plant DAO. And I'm going to choose finish. Now for a DAO, we're typically going to have things like uh, insert, update, delete methods. 
or maybe create, update, delete, create, uh, read. We might have a read method as well. Uh, maybe the read method we'll call fetch. So once again, I'm going to say um, public list plant fetch plants. Okay, and terminate with a semicolon. Control Shift O, organize imports, Java util list again. Now, just th this recording is getting a bit long, so I won't do the Java doc in the recording. I'll do the Java doc once the recording has ended, so you don't have to watch me do that. So fetch plants, and then uh, we could give it a public, maybe uh, public void insert plant plant like so uh, throws exception okay uh, we could do a public void update and then again plant plant throws exception and finally public void delete plant whoops plant throws exception and save we can probably get more specific with those exceptions but at this point i think that's a fairly good placeholder okay now let's go back to our plant service and let's think about what we want this filter plants to do well first of all we need to get a reference to that uh, plant service uh, the, i'm sorry the plant dao so i'm going to say i plant dao plant dao and i'm going to add the at inject annotation to this and let's spring auto wire it as a matter of fact i should go ahead and create the at named annotation on top of my plant service class as well okay control shift o again okay uh, now what i can do in my filter plants is i can say i can say plant dao dot fetch plants okay and uh, control one will interrogate what that returns and assign it to a new local variable. So uh, let's say all plants equals plant DAO dot fetch plants. Okay, now what we can do, we, we can store this in memory. As a matter of fact, uh, maybe making it a local variable isn't the best choice because maybe we want to uh, we want to use this and more than just the single method call. So I'm going to say convert local variable to field. Okay. And now what I'm going to do at the top of this method is I'm simply going to say if all plants equal equal null, then open curly all plants equals plant DAO fetch plants. So I know I did that a little bit quickly, but just so you see when I converted a local variable to a field, it put it up here. Uh, in the class plant service, but not within a specific method. That means it has visibility within uh, within all methods of this class. And then what I do here is I say, hey, if I've never populated that before, let's go ahead and populate this. And if we handle this class smartly, then uh, we're only going to need to populate that list one time, which goes back to our objective of having a local cache of data for performance. Okay, now what we need to do is filter the list. So I'm going to make a collection, array, list, plant, and let's say, whoops, and let's say return plants equals new array, list, plant. Now you might say, wait a minute, okay, well hang on one second, control shift O, organize imports. And then let's say we're going to return return plants. So this is what we're returning. You might notice that I have, I'm creating an array list here, but I'm actually returning a list. That's okay and that's legal. Um, but you know, we can just make it a list if we want. So let's go ahead and just make it a list like so and save. And what do we not like here? Uh, return plants. Okay, it looks like I just slightly misspelled it there. Okay, so interface on the left, 
Object type on the right, remember the definition of polymorphism. You probably have this memorized by now. Variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call. Object type tells us what's going to happen when we call those methods. So in this case, list and interface, that's just fine for a variable name. Okay, now what I'm going to do, filter the list. I'm going to say um, for E, control space, an eclipse, that gives me a shortcut for the for each loop. Um, the only thing I don't like here is what we're iterating over. I want to iterate over all plants. Okay, so this is going to touch every plant that's in the collection of all plants that we're getting from the DAO layer. What we're going to do is we're going to interview each plant and say, do you contain this filter? If you do, I'm going to add you to this subset, this other collection. So we'll say if uh, plant dot to string and then we might say contains okay filter uh, and then from here we're going to say okay if the plants string representation uh, contains the filter text then we're going to add it to this subset return plants which we're going to return now what's in what's going to be in that plant dot to string well that's up to us let's see what's currently in it Currently, it's just returning the name of the plant. But as we develop this DTO, we're going to add more attributes, genus, species, cultivar, and common name. So this, uh, this selection I'm doing on line 31, because it's searching in whatever's returned by two string, if we do return genus, species, cultivar, and common name, it means it's going to be searching acro across all four of those attributes. So uh, return. So we're going to say return plants.add plant. Easy as that. Okay, uh, and that's it. So I'm going to add a little bit of commenting that says this plant matches our criteria. So add it to the return the collection that will be returned from this method. Okay, filter the list and we're going to say uh, interview all possible plants and uh, co uh, well, I want to say copy and move uh, move plants that contain the filter text into our subset collection, which is return plants. Okay. Filter all possible plants, which is all plants. Okay. That's good. Now, here's a trick. Uh, We've written this and we have not written the, the actual DAO yet. We're only programming against the interface. And you might say, wait a minute, how can, you, how can you do this if you haven't done the DAO yet? Well, that's the whole point of working in layers and working with interfaces, is I might be the person working on the business logic. I don't care about the internals of the DAO. I just know what I'm allowed to call on that DAO level, and that's what's in this iPlant DAO. The internals of how it works does not matter to the business logic layer, does not matter to the UI layer. I just know that I can get all plants by calling this fetch plants method just like so. That's fine. Okay, I can go ahead and write my code based on this contract that we've defined through the interface. So it takes out the dependency that we might have somebody uh, who would be in the persistence layer who might be a bit of a, a procrastinator slowing down the whole project. That doesn't happen, or it doesn't have to happen, when we are in clear layers like we have here, DTO, DAO, and UI, uh, and when we're also when we're also using interfaces as a contract between those layers. Now, what about testing this though? Can we test this? The answer is yes, we can, and we will cover that in a separate video where we're going to talk about uh, unit testing our classes. I look forward to seeing you then.